Um, okay, so I want to introduce Krista Stanford. She is the owner of Krista Stanford um, Consulting. And as I think it was Carrie who just said, you hear a lot about passion. And what does that mean? What does that mean when, you know, our joke is like, I have a passionate 15 year old boy that loves to play video games. I have a passionate girl, you know, she loves to shop. Like, but what does it really mean? And what does that mean um, as kids discover themselves? So I am pleased to welcome Krista. I think you will very much enjoy her. Thanks. Thanks, Stephanie. Okay, can you all hear me as I walk away from the podium? We good? Okay, first I want to acknowledge everyone for being here because I know this is a crazy process and a crazy journey as Joe mentioned. Um, there's a lot to think about and I think it's awesome that you guys are taking the time out to think through these things and prepare yourselves for these things. I hope that I follow in your footsteps and do that someday. I haven't done it yet, but I hope to do the same thing as you. So um, kudos to you. So. Tonight we're going to be talking about finding and pursuing your passion. And I'm actually really interested. How many people have had a conversation about this or been told to think about this or at some point someone's brought it up? Is this a common conversation we're having? Kind of. Yeah, I get some head shakes. Okay, and how many people are kind of like, how the heck do I have this conversation or how do I help my child find their passion before they go to college? Yeah, okay. Um, it is a tough conversation because... We were joking, Steph and Sue and I were talking about how it is tough to figure out what your passion is when you're 17 or 18 and all you want to do is hang out with your friends and play video games or um, go down the street to the nearest restaurant. And so tonight I want to share a few things, five things um, that you can take with you tonight that will help start the conversation. And that's simply all we're trying to do is start the conversation around this topic. Um, because it is a little bit more abstract, and it's kind of difficult to figure out how we move through that before we go to college. Now, when I was going to college, we didn't have these conversations. I didn't have any conversations around finding my passion or what was important to me. My parents basically said, you work hard, and you find something you're good at, and then you find a degree, and then you go get a job. And that's what I did. I said, okay, mom and dad, I'm going to go do that. And so I went down to OU. I majored in public relations, I got out, I got a great job, and then, what's, is this it? And that's kind of what I did, and I didn't really understand, and I was looking around me, and I'm looking around, and I'm like, wait, what's the joke here? I don't, I, I'm not really sure if I'm enjoying this quite yet. And so I ended up taking some time to think about what is my passion, and what am I interested in, and what fulfills me? And so I went on a journey to figure out what that was after college. And what I figured out was that so much of it was just learning about me, and I hadn't taken the time to do that. And I realized that in high school, no one ever really gave me the time or the space to figure out who I was and ask me questions and help me be curious, as Carrie said, um, in a very strategic way. And so I spent a lot of time after college figuring out what I was passionate about. And so this was kind of a student's brain, a kid's brain maybe, even our brains as adults. We have so many things going on between college and technology and friends and school and everything we have going on, this is our brain these days. So it's really difficult to have the time and the space to think about who we are, what interests us, and what we want to do with our lives, right? I mean, I still struggle with this, and I'm sure I will forever. And so tonight, we have about maybe 15 more minutes, where I really want you to just think about you or your child and think about how we can take passion and really start to apply it. And as I said earlier, just start the conversation. But first, we're gonna watch a quick video because who doesn't love a video? When I was in school, every time the teacher said we're gonna watch a video, I got really excited. All right, so this is Brené Brown with Oprah. Brené is a, if you're not familiar with Brené, she is a psychologist and researcher, and she does work around empathy, trust, compassion, uh, vulnerability, and shame. An incredible work. She has some really good books, and they're going to give us a quick talk, and then I'll come back and tell you why I chose this video. One of the things I think is the most moving here, and I want everybody to know that we're going to have it on Oprah.com, is the wholehearted parenting manifesto. I mean, because what's so great about all of this information, it's great to be able to use for yourself, but I just think how wonderful to be able to raise your kids this way. So can you read the parenting manifesto? I can. Yes. I don't know if I can read it without crying because yeah, well. I'm away from my kids. <laughs> but, um, okay. And this is, every, every home has to have its own manifesto. Yeah. If you don't, 
then your home is operating under, you know, confusion and chaos and whatever. And maybe you have a manifesto that hasn't been spoken, but I love this for people to sort of incorporate as their own and adjust as, as, as they will. But above all else, I want you to know that you are loved and lovable. You're saying this to your children? Yes. Okay. You will learn this from my words and my actions. The lessons on love are in how I treat you and how I treat myself. I want you to engage with the world from a place of worthiness. You will learn that you are worthy of love, belonging, and joy every time you see me practice self-compassion and embrace yes. my own imperfections. Yes. We will practice courage in our family by showing up, letting ourselves be seen, and honoring vulnerability. We'll share our stories of struggle and strength. There will always be room in our home for both. We will teach you compassion by practicing compassion with ourselves first, then with each other. I want you to know joy, so together we'll practice gratitude. I want you to feel joy, so together we'll learn how to be vulnerable. Together we'll cry and face fear and grief. I will want to take away your pain, but instead I will sit with you and teach you how to feel it. Oh, I'm going to cry right now. We all want a mother like that yeah, and a dad. Steve, hello. <laughs> We will laugh and sing and dance and create. We will always have permission to be ourselves with each other. No matter what, you will always belong here. Okay. Mm. Okay. As you begin your wholehearted journey, the greatest gift that I can give to you is to live in love with my whole heart and to dare greatly. I will not teach or love or show you anything perfectly, but I will let you see me. And I will always hold sacred the gift of seeing you, truly, deeply seeing you. I wish for every parent in the world to go to Oprah.com, get that book, put that on their wherever in your house, in your kitchen. I, I just wish everybody could live by those words, really. Me we too. Would, that's how you change the world. I believe it. All right. So why did I choose? Well, first of all, who liked that video? Look at Okay, good. I, I, would, I was hoping it would resonate a little bit. Um, so you may be wondering, okay, well, what does that have to do with passion? And for this conversation in particular, the, that has to do with passion because as parents, you have a really big job in helping your, under, your children understand what they're interested in, what they're passionate about, and really who they are. And I actually think about this. This is my husband flying upside down as we, as we were skydiving. And I put him up here as a reminder because... I found my, my interests and my passion after my first job and after I went to college and after I did everything they told me to do. But he grew up saying, I really want to play baseball and I want to do art. And his parents said, do it. Do what you love. Keep doing that. You can work the rest of your life. Just focus on that. And so he did. And what the interesting thing was that he played baseball, did art as he was younger. And now, as a very successful creative director, he can look back and tie all of his success to one home run that he hit in high school. That home run brought him to college, and the college brought him to his job. And so it's just very interesting how we've both taken different paths, and it all worked out. We're both great. We're both successful. So that should ease you a little bit, because it is a big responsibility. But we all make it OK, especially as we have really strong families behind us. And so as we're finding our and pursuing our passion, we kind of all do it together, much like Carrie was saying how we have to be there and be a part and be in the car. That's the same thing here. And so I'm going to talk about five things really quickly on how we can actually make that conversation happen. So you couldn't have teed this up better. The first one is encourage curiosity and celebrate the process. So as you're talking with your children about what they're interested in and, and what they might want to do with the rest of their lives, has anybody heard of the growth mindset versus the fixed mindset? Okay, so Carol Dweck is a leading researcher in this space, and she's come up with this idea of the growth mindset. Basically, it means that we can continue to grow and learn as we get older and we're exposed to new things. And what she says is really follow the curiosity and figure out what interests you and then keep going to figure out what's next. The other big thing that she says is focus on the process. Don't necessarily focus on the outcome because a lot of times it might, we might be saying, hey, I'm so glad you tried that. You did a great job and you worked really hard. It didn't necessarily work out for you right now. Let's try it again. And so that just encourages your student to keep going and growing because how we're born is not necessarily how we stay. 
So think about that as you're having conversations. Oh, and the fixed mindset is more like as you're born, you stay that way for the rest of your life. Um, we're finding more and more with the brain that that's just not the case. Number two, uncover your lens for life. Now, I cannot take credit for this one. This was totally Sue as we were having a conversation the other day over lunch. And basically, what we were saying is as I was, I went home a couple weeks ago, and I'm going to be a little embarrassed to say this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. I was cleaning out my childhood closet. My parents had let me keep it there for this long, and finally I said I would finally clean it out. So I was going through all my letters and my cards from my mom and medals and all these things, and I'm filtering through it. And what I found was I've always been a very similar, I've always had a very similar lens on life. And you know who knew it way before I did? My mom. And I was reading all of these cards, and she knew exactly who I was. Now that I've taken the time to figure out who I am, she was already telling me that when I was 14, 15, 16. And so this is where you have a really strong role in your child's life, is you help them develop the principles of who they are, and they're going to take those out with them for the rest of their life. You know some of what they're passionate about. I think I was talking with Sarah. I'm not sure where she went. And she was telling me a little bit about her son's passions, and she's very keen and aware of what he's interested in, and she's trying to figure out how he's going to let that play out for the rest of his life. And you also understand their personality. You know how they ebb and they flow and how they're going to grow. And so fostering these things so that they can take those out into the world and having conversations around that to help them explore and to build that foundation. So once you have the right mindset, you have the right foundation, everybody's talking about the genius zone. So what is the genius zone? The genius zone is where your heart and your mind meet. So this is where we take the things that we're really interested in and then we figure out how to apply them practically. Because it's great to be really interested and really passionate, but we still have to make money. We have to you know, exist in society, so we need to do this in a very practical way. And we can use that lens that we just talked about to figure out how to apply our passions to our jobs. And a lot of times, it may, not, it may be that we can cover 90% of the things that we're interested in in our career, but maybe there's that little extra 10%, like playing an instrument, being a part of a play, playing a sport, you can get that outside of work as well. Or when it comes to a degree, you can maybe get your degree in something and then do something on the side as well. So being creative with the way that you apply passion. Number four, plan, experiment, learn, and grow. So a lot of this is once, people have, once your children have the right mindset and they're thinking about what they're going to do, they have their foundation, they're starting to apply where these interests might lie, have them set a goal. Have them work on a project. Help them go through that. Be in the car with them as they explore that interest and go through them, go, go through the challenges with them. Like Brené was saying in that video, she was saying, I'm going to let you approach those challenges and I'm going to help you go through those things. But you have to go through that to understand what you don't like and what you do like. So knowing what you don't like is just as important as knowing what you do like. And then number five, don't be afraid to give feedback. One of the things that Oprah has said when she was interviewing, she said, I could interview a president, I could interview Beyonce, I can interview someone who's been in prison for 30 years. And every time when they get done with an interview, they say, how did I do? And so a lot of times, children especially are looking to you to know, hey, how am I doing? You know, what, what, what do you think about what I'm doing? Whether they might also be pushing your buttons and thinking when you're going to say, no, don't do that. Um, but a lot of times they really just want to know, how am I doing? Do you have some feedback for what I should be thinking about? And use those opportunities as you're having the conversation to let them know, you're doing really well, keep going. Or maybe this is really difficult, let's keep trying. So a few key takeaways here. So lead by example, which is something that Brené was sharing most compellingly in her video. Build a manifesto, I think those are really important. Um, celebrate the process of learning and growing. Always be a student and be curious. Experiment often and provide feedback and ask questions. And most importantly, and this goes back to the conversation that we've been having this whole time when it comes to passion. This is something that Elizabeth Gilbert said, and she said, if you can let go of passion and follow your curiosity, your curiosity might just lead to your passion. Thank you. <laughs>